on. Hope you guys can hear it. it. Might be too loud. Hello, everybody. Back here with Chris, myself, Hello. and Crazy right. Pac-Man. All right, here we go. Well, <laughs> okay, we're gonna show you. We're at the Yamaha booth, you guys. These are the people that I'm media, so um, most of the people that came in here through. Uh, for their badges were through Yamaha. I had a 100 person guest list. All right, here we go. So you had mentioned Steinberg. Yes, I was, I uh, started off my recording career with Steinberg, computer recording, when computers were first starting to do audio. And Steinberg was the first one, I used it on my Mac. It was very buggy at the time. Yeah. Because computers weren't that powerful and it was a whole new thing. I ended up switching over to Logic, but Steinberg was, has since gotten very, very good. The Nuendo, which is like the pro version of it, yeah. has been used for tons and tons of professional recordings. It's their high-end version. I'm not sure what Dorico is. Yeah. It might have something to do with music notation software or something. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. So, but it's a solid program. Yeah. All the audio programs have come a long way. It's all computer-based. <laughs> yeah. So that's it? <laughs> no more reels of tape and mixing boards and all that stuff. <laughs> See now, I just started... Pro Tools would be its competitor. But I started using Ableton. Ableton, which used to be... Is that owned by Sony now? Or all owned by Sony? I don't know. All the big companies gobbled up all these small companies. Okay, look. Oh, oh so sorry. <laughs> this is mine! Oh, there you go. This is mine! Well, wait. Kind of. Mine is a 10XU. I don't know what the difference is. What's U? U probably has a USB thing on it. Oh, it is. It Let's is. see if this has a USB on it. I don't see one. So yours could go into straight into a computer. Right. Oops, sorry. So yeah, this, this is my version without the, without, without the U. So I have one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten channels. Yeah. Uh, ten inputs. These are like stereo ones right here. Okay, I have, I have a quick question. I have a quick question. In terms of sometimes, sometimes it cracks just a tiny, tiny bit. Is it because of my gain? I'm just curious. It could be the microphone needs a pad turned on because you're too close to the microphone I have itself. My microphone has a pad. Usually, most mic microphones have a minus 10 dB pad. I would flick that first, so start it at the source. That'll turn the microphone output down by 10 dBs, okay. which is like half. Okay. If it's still crackling after you do that, you probably have your gain up too high. Yeah, well, I've turned it down pretty, right. pretty, I've turned it down quite a bit, actually. So you really want to set this as your level. Right. So you want to put it, see where that little line is right there? Right. That's the no line. So set it like that. Then go up to the gain and adjust that up and down and watch your VU meters. Right. Wherever your meter is on here. Over here. My meter's here. Yeah, so you'll be looking. And you don't want it to hit peak. If it hits peak and turns red, right. that's when you're going to hear the crackle. And so then turn it down a little bit. Where would you turn? Yeah, you, this is the level here. That, well, you have a gain up here, don't oh, you? Oh, the gain, yeah. The gain up here. here. You're going to okay. be adjusting this. My gain is watch, pretty much down. Yeah, you're going to be watching your VU, VU. This may have a pad on it, too. Right. It'll knock it down by 26 dBs, which is a lot. So if you're doing a bass drum or a snare drum, you probably want the pad on. Okay. Because the source itself is so loud. Okay. But if you're just doing your voice, you shouldn't have to use the pad. Right, I don't use that. Yeah. The only See, time I, do, I turn it on is if I don't want to So turn. even talking, if you're just talking low and then you suddenly laugh. Right. And you're real loud and it crackles, you're going to want to turn it down, or turn your gain down a little bit. Okay. If you want it to hit right about zero. Hit into zero, sometimes maybe lighting up the plus six. Okay. You're hitting peak, it's way too loud, sure. so you're gonna get distortion. And then your level here, that is, your mic level should be at. That's okay. for when you're doing little right. temporary adjustments or when you're mixing down. The gain is where you're gonna adjust it. This is where you're fine tuning. Okay. If for some reason you wanted to talk lower because you were playing a video or you turned your piano on or something, you do temporary adjustment to turn it down. Then you'll know to go back to this null spot to get your your original level where it was perfect. How about somebody who's like me, who's kind of not soft spoken, but my levels compared to like others are super low. 
Well, that's where each person would have their own mic, so you could do this for each voice. Right. Okay. So you get the ideal level for everybody. Okay. And then again, you'll use these to fine tune it. This is all for fine tuning. So if you're listening back and he sounds too loud, you could turn him down a little bit right here. Right. Okay. Or if a guest calls in and right. they're soft spoken or it's a bad phone connection, you know to crank them up a little bit and then, t and then put it back to this line. That's like your average line. Okay. All these should look like that all the way across. They should all look like that. You're gonna set your main levels up here with the gain and then do your fine tuning, knowing you're always gonna return to that spot. See that little white arrow right there? In boards with faders, they would be marked with a fader like this. Right, right. This is the same thing, these solid lines, the zero. So your mixing boards should always look like that all the way across. That's your null spot. And then you're gonna make temporary, like let's say you're doing a live mix and somebody's doing a guitar solo. You're gonna turn it up a little bit because you want that guitar solo pop. Then when he's done with the solo, you go back down. So it's like your, your average spot. So you adjust the levels up here and then this is for fine tuning. Okay. Perfect, so see how it's bumping right now? That's pretty much what's happening for me too. It bumps up to about six. Yeah, when you start getting plus six, you're pushing it. Okay. You just want it to barely light up yellow. Okay. That's actually a little bit too hot. I don't know if these are digital or analog. Are these digital? Might be. No, these are... They're probably analog. Okay, I'm yeah, guessing. probably. Analog does what's called soft distortion. It'll get fuzzy sounding. Yeah. Digital distortion, once you hit the maximum, it's going to crackle and sound horrible. You see why I like him? I love him. He's so freaking amazing. So you're, you should just be, the white should be flashing occasionally. Really, I like to keep it around minus three. Just barely zero flashing, just a little bit. Then you'll be solid. Okay. This is a little too hot. If I was mixing this, I would turn this down a little bit. I would go, yeah. let's bring this down so it's like See, that. and I had an opportunity to get like this. That. Yeah, I had an opportunity to get the 10, the 12, but I'm like, I don't even, I barely even use. I only use Yeah, for your one. purposes, yeah. that's enough, you know? Yeah. It's all the same thing, just more of it. Right. You know? I love my Yamaha. Yamaha's are great mixers. Their digital consoles have been the standard in the industry for years and years. Yeah. And years. For live performances. Oh, there you go. There, look at Ralph. mixing board USB so it could go straight into your computer right. just two channels that's enough and that's then enough. probably a third one our keyboard that's input really a stereo cute. input oh look and then here's I don't know what that what do you think that's for oh that's the USB input maybe probably probably yeah and then that's a stereo this is for some stereo like for with your keyboard in. keyboard yeah, yeah. oh they whatever. even tell you for microphone for guitars Right. Oh yeah, guitar, there's an input straight in. These kind of plugs, you can stick a guitar cord straight in them or a mic. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's a nice little idea. I love this. Live streaming package. Look at Yamaha finally did, decided to do a live streaming package. So it's a one channel. It's a one input for one For one mic, mic. yeah. Which is good, right? 
let's say you play guitar. So then you have this. Okay. And then that's the sound, I guess, coming back out of the computer. Yeah. The monitor back, I guess. Right channel, input mix, loop back, yeah. Headset. That would work. Interesting. How weird, huh? Kind of replaces Finally. the sound card on your computer. Probably sounds a lot better, I would say. And what kind of microphone is this? So you had mentioned patterns. There's something like this. That's a, called a cardioid pattern. That okay. means it picks up more in the front of the mic, and then it, as you get back towards the rear, it doesn't pick up back here. And as you go off to the side, it gets quieter and quieter, and the high end rolls off. So you really want to talk into it at like an angle like that. Right. Anything around here, that's the pattern. The pickup pattern looks like a heart. If you flip that upside down, it looks like a heart. That's why they say heart. Yeah. Your what? Your snowball does that? Yeah, my mic when I'm playing up. Yeah, because so, yours has a lot of distortion on, on your, uh, your Blue Yeti as well. So when you see a mic like this, you got to make sure wherever this little symbol is, that's the front of the mic. Right. You want to talk in here. If you got a group of people and you put two people here and somebody here, it's not yeah, the mic. Yeah. It's not the right <laughs> mic. Yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> if there's one that's just a round circle, I mean, it's omnidirectional. Right. And it'll pick up evenly. Some right. of them have a little switch and you can adjust it yeah. to it. a figure eight pattern. If you see one that's like an eight, that means that here's equally on either side. And nothing on the sides. Right. And around some of them, and we'll, we'll probably see some of them. I'll point the it audio. out for okay. audio. They have a switch. Okay. But if you don't understand what the symbols mean, you got it in the wrong place. You have a problem. That's what I want to know too. I want to get more of that yeah. info. I'll show you what it looks like. Is this Jackie? Yeah. Yeah. My wife uh, loves that stuff, and ever since the first time we went to Hawaii, we. Did. Oh my gosh! Oh, Purple badge, let me give you one of these. Have you guys met? Do you have like, any? Yes, oh, I love you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Let me give you okay, goodness. Oh boy. Oh. So that's the press kit there. Press oh, nice. releases, images, anything you need. Yay. That's our peer manager. Oh, yay. Okay, cool. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Everybody, this is Jackie. Jackie is the blast for the past, y'all. When I used to work here at Yamaha. Um, those years and years and years ago. She's Real not life. shy either. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you got a promotion. I did. Congratulations. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, would you sassy. mind taking it's a picture sassy. with your camera? Oh, do you mind? Sorry. Because my camera is like dead. Or not oh, camera, it's being used. Can you, can you take, take one of us, please? Okay. Okay. Sure. The light. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got a lot of purple face. Purple faces. <laughs> One for me, from your camera.